let me show you an example of how I use punishment to stop dogs from stealing off the counter. One of the big things is that, as I was saying earlier, is that if the dog jumps up on the counter to steal some food and we're right there, we yell at the dog, dog jumps down. We leave the room, dog jumps back up. So what I do is I set the dog up. I'll take a bagel, a piece of string, I tie it to a plastic bowl, I put a bunch of empty soda cans inside of it, and I tell the dog, don't touch my bagel, and I leave the room. Now when the dog jumps up, he grabs the bagel, he pulls it, the cans come crashing down, the dog spits it out and runs away. I'll show you right here, but the point I want to make is that I cover all those four steps. It's big, it's not associated with me, it happens the second the behavior occurs, and the timing is perfect. Alright? So, watch this. <laughs> See you later. So you can see right there, what I did with Izzy was I set her up by using punishment. I took a bagel, tied a piece of string around it, tied it to a big plastic bowl, put a bunch of empty soda cans inside of it, so when she jumped up, she grabbed the bagel, she pulled it, soda cans come crashing down. So at the moment the behavior is occurring, the negative uh, thing happens to her. So she spits the bagel out and runs away. There's no association with me. There's no association with anything else. It's just the association with her grabbing the bagel and then it collapsing on top of her. So that's a way of using punishment in a way that doesn't associate with the owner and you don't have to worry about a lot of the negative side effects. That's an effective way to use punishment. Now in order for that to work I would have to do that a couple of times in a row because remember every time the behavior occurs the punishment has to occur in order for it to really set in the dog's brain. So that is one way of using punishment and it doesn't really have to hurt the dog, it just has to stop the behavior.